Okay, the last one, but not the least one. Okay, guys, hey, welcome. We are live once again. Here we go. Our top story today is, according to the latest information, we are not in a housing bubble. When you have a void of information, you tend to make emotional decisions, according to Mark Hackett, Chief Economist for Nationwide. We've been looking at some headlines kind of across the board, and the first headline that caught my attention was Yahoo Finance. The housing boom is officially over. Home sales drop to a new low. That's right. CNBC, pending home sales drop in June. More evidence of a housing turnaround. Oh my gosh, then we've got CNN, home, home sales drop in June as prices continue to rise. Doesn't sound like a bubble to me. Right. <laughs> well, and the, the latest num numbers don't support that either. So what's the moral of the story? Don't always just read the headline. <laughs> That's right. you got to do, do, do the deep dive. Is that uh, the deep dive? We're doing the deep dive right now on the numbers. So you guys have the information that you need. That's right. Year over year home appreciation. This is three different sources of the same number. So the Federal Housing Agency, FHA, up 18% year over year. Uh, CoreLogic, 15.4%. And S&P, Case, Schiller, U.S. Na National Price Index, 166 So yeah. those are big numbers. Yes. Uh, out of those three, I think I'm going to go with the F FHA, Federal Housing Administration, and their number is 18% price appreciation year over year. That's, yep. a, that's, that's nationally. Ours here in Ventura County is higher than that. So they, these are all national numbers. So they go from coast to coast. That's right. Including Alaska and Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so the new monthly listing counts, they are growing. So year to date, we just did the first six months of, uh, of the year. They've gone from January 278, uh, March 344, May 403, and June 447. So the listings are actually growing. Yes, those numbers are in thousands. So yes, June is 447,000 listings compared to January of 278,000 listings. So I don't know where they're getting their headlines, but this is the real news you can use. Yeah, America's uh, home equity, uh, the average home equity of a homeowner with a mortgage in the United States has gone up $33,000, uh, which is just, it's a lot when you look at these national numbers. The current average equity of a mortgaged home is $216,000. So when people talk about, oh, there's going to be a crash or it's a bubble or there's going to be all these foreclosed homes on the market, we just don't see it because the people now have equity. So if they go to sell their home, if they lost their job or they lost their tenants, uh, when they go to sell their home, there's money there. That's right. And almost 40% of the homes in the United States are out owned outright, free and clear. So there's no foreclosures going to happen on those. Right. And we've seen that n number be higher too. So it just depends who's cutting the pie. That's right. We've <laughs> seen that number as high as close to 50%. 50. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So, Almost half the homes in the U.S. are owned outright. That's right. Uh, and the 19.6% increase in equity totals over $1.9 trillion in homeowner equity right now. It's just um, record-breaking. That's unbelievable. And that's through CoreLogic, and that's mm -hmm. a 2021 number. Those are current. These are current yeah, numbers. All, yeah, all these numbers totally current. So, with that being said, how about sellers that are thinking about selling. What are some of the things you're hearing? Lisa? Well, number one, don't be too unrealistic. If your neighbor's house sold for a million dollars, don't think yours is going to sell for two, two million. Uh, your neighbor's house selling at a million dollars is probably a record sales price for your neighborhood. And so you're right on in there uh, that now is the time. Everybody likes to set records, but records are not easily set. I mean, obviously the Olympics are on and people are trying to do the world records every single time they're entering an event. But if you do set a record, you either need an all cash buyer or a large down payment because usually the appraiser, they don't want to set records. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not their business. No, they want to be well within line of the close comparable sales 
in your area. So yes, if you have a home that's sold in your area for a million dollars and you're thinking a little bit over that, I think that's realistic. I think if you're 20% over that, I don't think that's so realistic, you know, unless you have improvements that the house that sold for a million did. Let's say you have the same house, but you have a pool. Let's say you have a guest house. Let's say you have different improvements on your property that they didn't, then that becomes more realistic. So obviously a professional is going to help you guide you through the tumultuous waters that lay out there for all of us in the real estate market. That's right. Number two, don't wait. If you are thinking about selling your house, don't wait. The experts are saying that the um, interest rates are going to be rising at the end of the year. So now is the time. While the market is hot, strike while the iron's hot. Yes, don't wait. And then, of course, now is a perfect time to sell because prices have never been higher. You know, if this is works into what you want to do and your plan and hey, you want to either relocate, downsize, upsize, whatever you want to do, now's a perfect time to do that. If you're just selling to grab the money of the equity in your house just to go and buy another house just like it, that really doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Well, Depends if you want to move out of state, depends if you want to upsize, downsize, buy an investment property, buy a vacation home, totally depends on what you need. Well, what if we were buying our next door neighbor's house that was just like our house, it's not, but what if it were, and we sold our house for X and bought their house for Y, same price, we, re we really wouldn't gain anything there. Right, well, who would do that? Well, I don't know, somebody that thought, hey, you know, I'm going to make a lot of money, so let's make a lot of money, but let's move next door. The, so now is the time. If you're thinking about <laughs> selling your house, now is the time because they expect inventory is growing right now as the numbers we just talked about, and it's expected to grow into uh, as the months move forward. Well, you still got me hung up on the, who would do that. Let's say you had $600,000 equity and you finance the house next door 100% or 95%, then you'd still have $600,000 in the bank, right? So there is a, I guess there is a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So... With all that being said, I do want to throw in one other number that the forbearance kind of was way overblown. The overblown part was 96% of people that are in forbearance have equity in their home. 96%. So that's quite a bit different than if we go back to, let's say, 2008 through 2014, where there were over 9 million people that either got foreclosed on, did a D in lieu, or some sort of short sell. Yeah, I mean, when they started this, the projection was that 30% of the mortgages uh, in the United States were going to go into forbearance at the beginning, uh, and that's just not what happened. At the height in May of 2020, there were 8.47% of, mor of mortgages in forbearance, and now that number is down to 3.5%. And more than half of those that did go into forbearance have paid everything in full. So that is just not something that we see affecting the market in, in a big way. Yeah, the forbearance deal was very easy when uh, the pandemic first hit, where anybody that wanted one could get one. And I think a lot of people rushed to get a forbearance because they didn't see what the future held. And then the future sure turned around very quickly in a lot of industries. Some industries, not so much, but uh, a lot of major industries saw major profits. Yeah. There's always somebody that makes money no matter what the market conditions. Just ask the pharmaceutical co companies. <laughs> yes, for Walmart. Walmart had record-breaking profits. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time ever, well, the first time they broke the record probably last year was the first time they did. Year after year, they seem to be breaking it. But this is a record-breaking year for companies like Walmart. So the likelihood of us having a, for, uh, having a foreclosure crisis again is about zero. And that's a quote from Ivy Zellman, who is one of the most respected uh, economists on Wall Street. That's, that's unbelievable. About zero. Yes. That's zero a, percent. <laughs> that's, that's like it's never going to happen, right? That's right. So are we in a housing bubble? No, we're not. Absolutely not. <laughs> so uh, single family home units completed is the lowest in the past 13 years below the 50 year national average. So the problem we're having right now, it's all about inventory and the builders haven't built homes like they have in the decades prior in the last 13 years. 
So it's strictly a supply and demand, basic economics 101 housing shortage. It is. Uh, I know the lower the supply, the higher the demand. Those arrows cross intersection, they cross somewhere along the line, and that's the true market value. And that line's getting pushed up because we have low supply and high demand. Yep. So according to Lawrence Yoon, who is our National Association of Realtors Economists, he says, it's not a bubble, it's simply lack of supply. That's what we would say. Yeah, absolutely, definitely a lack of supply in the real estate listings. So if you're thinking about buying or selling or investing in real estate, we'd love to talk to you about it. And you can always find us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. And we'd love to talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.